So sweet. Thank you so much, Dr. Derek Musgrove and everyone here tonight. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Tonight, represents dreams fulfilled. Dreams fulfilled. We all believe in family. We know the importance of those who love us dearly. I'm looking out into the eyes and faces of more than 900 people but you will appreciate my taking a moment to say two things. Number one, I was working on my speech, and my son said to me today what he has said to me many times when he was a kid. He said, Dad, keep it short. <laughs> and so I want you to see my wonderful son who inspires me more than he will ever know. Eric, he keeps me humble. Eric, would you stand with people? I want everybody to see Eric. But Eric. And then Britt mentioned my wife. Let me just say she is my best friend for over 40 some years. She is my muse. She is my rock, my beloved Jackie, the best woman I know. Jackie, would you stand? I especially asked that people would invite Britt to be the MC because he has become just that, a loved friend to so many of us. I heard the president, the former president of Princeton say this week to our Board of Regents that Britt Curran was by far the most admired head of a system in the nation. Would you give Britt Curran a hand, please? Mm. The only way I can handle tonight, because it is an overwhelmingly positive feeling that we all have, is to think of tonight as a celebration of many things. First of all, it is a celebration of community in the spirit of George Bernard Shaw. It is a celebration of education and the fact that education transforms lives. It is a celebration of a university, you see, the same year, 50 years ago, when I was a child in Birmingham, and I've got friends and dear beloved family from Alabama here, the same year that this charter was established in this state, I was a little kid marching with Dr. King, hoping that I would be given the chance to get the best possible education. I could never have imagined sitting in that jail that one day there would be a place that existed like a UMBC, or that I might one day sit here, stand here, and talk to you. None of us in this room as Americans could have imagined in 1963 that we would be where we are as a nation. And while we have a long way to go, we have made so much process. Give our nation a hand, a hand for the progress we have made. And amazingly, you know, it's rare that Britt Curran and I disagree, and yet he said something tonight that was wonderful, and yet I'm going to disagree with him, and I want him to think about this. He said that I could have gone anywhere and we could be doing these same things. I think it was Providence that brought Jackie and me and Eric to Baltimore, because I, as I go around the country, I have not found a community more supportive of education, more connected to each other than this state and the Baltimore area. Give Baltimore and Maryland a hand for that.
And to show you the significance of Providence, Jackie and I began college at our beloved Hampton at the same time that the doors opened at UMBC. And amazingly, 20 years later, my wife was teaching there for a while. I got a chance to come there with Michael Hooker, and it began. If somebody could give me some water, I'd be really happy. <laughs> and this won't be long. But here's the point that I want to make. We were founded as a university, UMBC, at a time when Americans were not accustomed to a university being a place for people of all races. We were just in the process of saying we should come together and give all kids a chance to study. And so for the past 45 years, UMBC has been an experiment in America an experiment that said, can we bring people from all races together and expect the most from them and push them on to do all sorts of things? When Bob and Jane Meyerhoff first said, we believe that if any child has the opportunity to do what our kids have done, that child can go to heights we've never imagined. When all of my donors and friends and all of you came to see me that day 20 years ago, we were building on the foundation, as Rick Burns said, of so many people who had laid that set of rules that said, we will help all kinds of students. And so tonight, we celebrate our beloved UMBC, a place that has been developed by a state where legislators, amazing governors, people like Steny Hoyer, our senators, Barbara Mikulski and Ben Cardin, all believe strongly in the power of education. And so I want you to applaud the power of education in our state and our nation to transform lives, a celebration of education. When, when Jackie and Eric and I would go back to Birmingham, and my father had died and my mother was still alive, she would be so happy when we came in. And she would look at us and she would say, this seems like a dream. She was so thrilled that we were doing so well. And I thought about my parents and all of our parents who would look at us now and say, look how well our families have done. And I think to myself, Tonight is a magical night. Rita Becker and I talk about magic sometimes. Tonight is a magical night because yes, you came to support me and I am so appreciative, but you came to support what our university is doing to support the students. Nothing takes the place of passion for helping students and faculty to become the best. And I salute my colleagues because with all the praise I'm getting, I know this is about all of us being together at the right time, at the right place. In a state where people have said, let's keep supporting public higher education, with a chancellor who's doing the kind of job that he is, with the former chancellor, Don Langenberg, here tonight, who was doing the same thing, trying to build support for education. And so this is my thought to you, with one more glass of water. I want you to hear the words of Aristotle. They give me goosebumps. He said this, excellence is never an accident. Excellence is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, sincere effort, and excellent and intelligent execution, high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. And finally, he says this, it represents choices among a lot of options. Because you see, choice, not chance, determines destiny. Choice, not chance, determines destiny. Our country, our state, this wonderful university, we have all been led to this point to ask the question, what do we choose? 
what gives Jackie and me such pleasure about remaining in this wonderful state is that we in Maryland are saying to the country, we must choose education. Thank you all very much.